Hope I didn't catch you at a bad time. But this week in art, we're going to be talking about spider webs. You get to design your own and decide what are you gonna catch in your web. Art time, art time, art time with Mrs. Reed. This is a spider I noticed in my backyard building a big, impressive web to catch flies and other bugs. If it wasn't for the spider doing their important work, I would probably have way more flies and bugs coming inside my house. So thank you, spider. I'm always so amazed that spiders can set up their webs in the perfect spot. Here's one spider web right outside my door, set up right by the light where all those flies are attracted to. After studying the spider webs that I saw outside my house, I decided to draw the things I noticed. When spiders build their webs, they walk their silk from one surface to another surface far away to connect it. That first line is called the bridge line. Then they have a middle point where they radiate all their other lines out from. Then from that middle point, they start to spiral outwards, connecting all those radiating lines. You can also practice drawing a spider. I'm using this little toy spider as inspiration. I'm borrowing it from my daughters. The part where the spider's head is is kind of a small oval, and the rest of the body is a bigger oval. How many legs does a spider have? Anytime you draw a spider, make sure you count eight legs there. And if you want your spider to look a little bit more realistic, the legs of the spider should bend. They should have some points in them where they bend, just like our fingers do. I have observed some spider webs and practiced drawing them, I'm ready to make one. One way you can make a spider web is by using oil pastels and watercolor paints to make a resist painting. I am using white oil pastel, which is a little tricky to see against my white paper. It sort of camouflages. But once I add my watercolor paint on top, you will notice my spider web much more. Just like some real spider webs are hard to notice unless you're looking at it from the right angle. Now here comes the fun part. I am putting watercolor paints all across my paper and you can see that wherever I put that white oil pastels, it is resisting the paint and staying white. You can even see how the paint sort of bubbles up on those web webby spots. was using mainly purple, blue, and black. I was trying to make my background sort of look like nighttime or twilight dusk sort of colors. Don't forget to include something caught in your web. Here, this spider caught some yummy candy. You can make a different sort of spider web using yarn, glue, and scissors. After drawing my spider web on a piece of construction paper, I traced over my pencil lines using the glue. Then I laid my yarn right on top of my glue and then tapped it into place. I trimmed it when I needed to. I thought it was easier to do the radiating lines of the web first before doing the spiral part. Make sure you tap it into place so that the yarn won't come undone or move around too much.
notice your fingers starting to feel pretty gluey at this point, but try not to worry about it too much. It is a lot of fun um, to make a mess sometimes, especially an artsy mess. And don't worry too much about all the white glue that you might still see on your paper. When it dries, it will dry clear, so it won't look as noticeable. don't forget to catch something in your web. This time, my spider caught a fly. This is probably the messiest way to make a web. You could use glue and glitter, or you can do what I did where I mixed some food coloring in with some salt. I didn't have any glitter in my house, so I thought this could be the next best thing. After you stir it up enough to spread out all the color with all the salt, you are going to draw a spider web design on either wax paper or tin foil, something that the glue will be able to peel off of once it's dry. Directly on your wax paper or tin foil, you are going to use the glue to start tracing over your lines, sort of like the last spider web I showed you. It is really important that you don't have any gaps in your glue. You want to make sure that all your glue stays connected. So after I trace over all my lines on the wax paper, I decided to go back and add a little bit more glue to any parts of my web that looked like they might be a little too skinny or weak. I wanted my web to be nice and sturdy and strong once it dries and I peel it off the wax paper. Now here comes the fun part. Start sprinkling your glitter or your colorful salt all over your spider web. Be generous with it. If you used colorful salt like I did, you'll probably get some of that food coloring on your fingertips. Don't worry, it'll go away eventually. done this step you want to leave your spider web alone you want to let it dry and you have to wait so patiently for this step I'm sorry but once it is completely dry and depending on how much glue you used it might take a while once it's completely dry you'll be able to peel it off carefully from the wax paper as I make this video my spider web is still drying but once I peel it off it should look something like this when we learn more about spiders, we actually become less frightened of them. Spiders have attributes that remind us of personalities, so they often make great characters in books and stories and movies, and we see them as having lots of patience to wait for their food. We see them as having lots of perseverance to build their large, intricate webs, and artists are even inspired by spiders too. This sculpture is by an artist named Louise Bourgeois. She makes spider sculptures that are taller than people, taller than buildings, and some of them are even displayed outside for anyone to walk beneath if they're feeling brave enough. Some artists also like to think about what it must feel like to be a spider. These sculptures were made by a group of artists who built sort of these webs using tape. Artist Tomas Saracino created this huge netted artwork to allow visitors to float three stories high above a museum. This is in Germany. The artist did study spiders to decide how to create the design. Artist Ernesto Nito believes that we can make art that we enjoy with our bodies as well as our minds. So he makes sure that you can touch and interact with his netted artworks. So what kind of web are you going to make? And what do you think is going to be caught in it? Maybe you'll make a web completely different from the examples I've shown you based on the materials that you have around your house. I can't wait to see what awesome webs you come up with. <music>